So you'll be told to solve the following simultaneous equations log xy squared to base 3 is equal to 0 and log x squared y to base 2 is equal to 3, isn't it? Are we together? Okay? Good. So, what did we say from logarithm? If you have to solve this simultaneous solution, meaning we get rid of the logs, isn't it? So if this is base 2, the other side must also be base 2, isn't it? And you can remember when we were doing, what was 0? 0 was log 1 to any base, isn't it? 0 was log 1 to any, any base. So if you look at this, when you have log xy squared to base 2 is equal to 0, you must ensure that you have the same base on either side of the equation, isn't it? You must have, ensure you have the same base on either side of that equation. Or you say for by definition, when you have x raised to power a is equal to b, then the index a is the logarithm of the corresponding number to base x. Meaning the base is 2 here, then the index is b. So you can see b is our b here. Are you seeing? Because in our case it is written b is equal to yeah, just like that. So you see, log b, meaning b is what? xy squared. So it's supposed to be supposed to xy squared. Because it is log b, meaning this part is isn't it? Then x, x is the base, this is 2. Then 0 is, where is 0? Corresponding number. Corresponding number is, where's the corresponding number? It's inside the log. Then, the base is 2, then 0 is the index. So that is what it is. Are we together? So that 0 is logarithm of corresponding number to base 2. Are we together? So that you have 2 raised to power 0 is equal to xy squared. But the best way to do it is just like this, by using the laws of logarithm. If this is to base 2, you are sure you have the same base on the other side of the equation, isn't it? So you introduce log 2 to base 2, so you have the same base. So this 0 becomes the, the power, isn't it? Then you now have one term, one term, you ignore the log on either side of the equation. Are you seeing that? So you remain with xy squared is equal to 2 raised to power 0. Any number raised to power 0 is, is 1, isn't it? So in equation 1, you have xy squared is equal to 1. So if you make maybe x the subject of the formula, if you want to use substitution, it is 1 over y squared, isn't it? Then you go to the second case. If you have log to base 2, of x squared, x squared is equal to 3. So you simply introduce log 2 to base 2. Senior, so that you have the same base on either side of the equation, isn't it? Because log 2 to base 2 is 1, so you have the same base. So this becomes the power, isn't it? Then after that, one term, one term, you ignore the logs on either side of the equation, isn't it? So you remain with x squared y to be equal to here we remain with 2 raised to the power 3, which is 8, isn't it? So from the two simultaneous equations, we've found, we've found that x is 1 over y squared, equation 1. Then equation 2 we found, what have we found? You make x in both. So here we have x squared y is equal to 8. So you do substitution, we have x squared y is equal to 8 equation 2. So you can use any method. Substitution or or elimination. You can substitute for x, isn't it? So where there is x, you put the value of x. It is x squared y to be equal to 8. The value of x is 1 over y squared. So it is x squared y. x squared y. You substitute the first equation in the second equation. Meaning where there is x, you put the value of x, which is 1 over y Square. So 1 over y squared squared is a power outside, but I saw the power inside because this division there, isn't it? So that is the same as 1 over y to power power 4 times y is equal to 8. You remain with 1 over y to power 3, isn't it? Are we together? 1 over y to power 3 because 1 y, this is y over 1, cancels with 1 y, isn't it? To be equal to 8. So what is 1 over y to power 3? That is the same as 1 over y to power 3 is the same as y raised to negative 3. Isn't it? Isn't it? Then, what do you do? What is 8? 8 is the same as 2 raised to power 
three, isn't it? Are we together? So from there, what do you do to get Y? See you, you get rid of this negative three. So you multiply both sides of the equation by negative one over three to get rid of this negative three, isn't it? So that you remain with y is equal to three times negative one over three. So you get two raised to negative one. Two raised to negative one is one over, isn't it? Are we together? It's one over two. So after getting y to be one over two, you get x. So what is x? X is one over y squared. But what is your y? Your y is one over two. X over one over two squared. You get x is equal to 